I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we are looking at a new antenna, the Lumineer Axi Micro, which has all of the good characteristics of the Lumineer Axi in an even smaller form factor. And frankly, this antenna is so perfect for micro sized quads that I almost wanted to just make a video and say, look, here it is. Buy it and put it on your little quads. It's so good. But in the interest of you're going to learn something today, we're not stopping there. We're going to talk about axial ratio and gain and why those characteristics mat or really matter when you're thinking about what antenna to get. And it's not just like more is better. Stay tuned. So here's the Luminaire Axi, the standard one, and I've always liked this antenna for its small size. Uh, if you compare it to something like a TBS Triumph, it's it's pretty compact, and there's not a lot about it that's gonna like snag on a tree branch or anything or get pulled. Uh, so I've always liked it for that. But this is the Luminaire Axi Micro, and you can see it's way smaller. So for example, here's how we might mount this on a quad here I've got this build right here where I just took and I mounted it right under the arm and yeah you it's not the best when it comes to RF performance it's better to get it out away from the carbon fiber but on a really tight build like this you'll see a lot of racers doing it this way and that's it gets the job done on race day it's no problem but why I think this antenna is really gonna shine is on quads like this now this is the newbie drone Acrobee, and it's a 65 millimeter tiny whoop class drone. And these guys typically come with linear antennas on them, which are not very good. They do much better with a circular polarized antenna on them, especially because they're usually flying indoors where there's a lot more multipath and circular antennas do very well at dealing with multipath. Linear antennas do very poorly at dealing with multipath. And you can see, I've got this Cloverleaf. This is a Furious FPV Cloverleaf. It's, I think, one of the best of the Cloverleafs that you can get because it has this reinforcement at the center. But these guys tend to break, less so on little quads because the crashes are less energetic. But it's not the best. Enter this guy. Look how much better. Look how much more compact, just a better package overall this is going to make. And this comes in the UFL variant that you see here, and it also comes in an SMA, RPSMA. Uh, this is an MMC, uh, no, oh, it does come in an MMCX variant. That's actually, oh, huh, that's the one that's on this quad here. I'm using it. So it comes in all the connectors. It's got a stubby length. It's got a longer length, all the variants you could possibly want. But when we go to the smaller size, are we giving up anything in terms of RF performance? And the answer to that is, it's hard to say because you take these guys out and you fly them around. One of the things I've learned from doing my Fat Shark module receiver testing is if you're not flying the exact same flight path and the exact everything, it's very hard to get scientific results. Really the right way to test an antenna like this is not to fly it around, but to use a piece of expensive equipment that I don't have. Uh, a network analyzer is one example. And you've seen Alex Grieve uh, from, uh, you know, Ivy Crazy is his handle from Video Aerial Systems. He does these live streams sometimes where he tests antennas and shows their performance. Frankly, there's, we can model this antenna, the design of the antenna in a computer program and say, when built ideally, here are the characteristics this antenna should have. But then we go to manufacturing and very small changes in manufacturing can cause very big changes in antenna's performance. So without access to that equipment, we have to take Lumineer's word for it about the specs of the antenna. And they say that the specs of this antenna are no different than the specs of the bigger Axie. So let's talk about those specs. And the two specs we're most concerned with are antenna gain and axial ratio. Now antenna gain refers to how focused the antenna's coverage pattern is. And you might think it's a common misconception that more gain is better, right? A higher gain antenna will output more energy and have better penetration and more range. And that's true to a point, but there's a catch. An antenna's gain is achieved by focusing the beam pattern. So if you think about a, a, a garden hose that's putting out a big wide jet versus mm, a very narrow pencil, pencil jet of water, the same amount of water is coming out, but in one case it's spread widely, in one case it's focused very finely. And of course, with an antenna, 
Focusing the beam by using by designing a higher gain antenna means that you get more energy wherever the beam is pointing, but you get less energy everywhere else. And that's that's so so you don't get something for nothing with antenna gain. You get a more directional signal with more energy in one direction and less energy in all the other directions. Now, with a directional antenna, the way that works is you simply narrow the beam width to be narrower and narrower and more and more focused. More energy out front, less energy to the sides. But with an omnidirectional antenna, that wouldn't work because it wouldn't be omnidirectional if we focus the energy in one direction. So the way an omnidirectional antenna works is that when it has low gain, you get a sort of a spherical coverage pattern. And as the gain gets higher and higher, the coverage pattern gets narrower and narrower along the vertical axis, but you still have 360 degrees of coverage around the outside of it. So it's still omnidirectional, but there is a dead spot directly above and directly below the antenna. And that dead spot is always there. Well, it depends on the antenna designs, but with most common antenna designs, that dead spot is always there. You will get slightly less gain directly above and directly below the antenna, but with a low gain antenna, it's minimized. And with higher gain antennas, it gets to be more and more. So when would you want to use a high gain omnidirectional antenna? You would want to do that when you knew that the receiver or the transmitter, that they were going to always be roughly at the same sort of vertical level, right? At which point, if they're always going to be roughly at the same altitude, that's another way to put it, fly aircraft, let's call it altitude. If you know that they're going to be at roughly the same altitude, then focusing down the beam doesn't matter because the, they're still, the aircraft is still within the beam of the antenna. But if you know that they're, if you don't know that, if they're going to be at different altitudes or if the uh, aircraft is going to be all the way, then higher gain is actually worse. And it's one of the reasons that I have always said that the VAS ION, Video Aerial Systems, the VAS ION antenna is not a good choice to put on your quadcopter because I don't have an ion handy, but we'll just take this one here. It's just a, we'll just stick this antenna here. The ion has a 5 dB gain, which means it has a slightly narrower vertical beam width. It means that there's a slightly bigger dead spot right above it. And if you're flying a, a fixed a wing or a fixed wing, that's fine because they're not going to really, usually they'll be pretty upright and you'll be within that beam width. But for a quadcopter that's going to be flipping all over and down, anytime you get into this null, now you're going to get weaker signal and that could matter. So I think that for the, the antenna that's on the quadcopter, the lowest gain possible is what you want because that is the most circular and that's the most consistent in all directions because your quad's going to be flipping all different ways. And that's why I like the Axi. It has 1.6 dB of gain, which is a very, very low gain. And at first glance, you might think that's bad, but I've just explained to you why that's actually what you want, at least on the quad. On the goggles, you could convince me that a higher gain antenna on the goggles makes sense as long as you don't put your goggles on and then go like this, as so many people do. Because at that point, again, now think about what you put your goggles on and like this. Think about which way the antenna is pointing now. You're pointing the dead spot right at your quad. So if you hold your head up high, then a higher gain uh, 5 dB, like a VAS ion, could be a good antenna for your goggles, but not for your quadcopter because your quad is always flipping all over. Axial ratio is the other thing that we're concerned about. And axial ratio refers to the propensity of the antenna to reject cross-polarized signals. So we have left-hand polarized antennas, right-hand polarized antennas, and linear antennas, which are right in the middle. And an antenna that is 100% left-hand polarized will have very, very strong rejection of right-hand polarized signals, maybe as much as 30 dB of attenuation, which is essentially enough to just push that signal right below the noise floor as if it didn't even exist. And that's useful because if you have two transmitters that are close to each other in frequency, they're on close by channels, they're going to interfere. But if one of them's using a left-hand antenna and one of them's using a right-hand antenna, then they won't be able to see each other and the fact that they're close in frequency, they won't interfere. And that's why at races where you, you really want to get as many people in the air at a time, they'll actually say you must have left-hand antennas on the even channels and right-hand antennas on the odd channels. That's the goal. 
but antennas are seldom 100% left hand or right hand polarized. And that goes back to the design of the antenna. In fact, if you look at the polarization graphs, you'll see that as you sort of rotate around the antenna, there's varying degrees of polarization rejection. So the axial ratio refers to how good the antenna is at rejecting cross-polarized signals. And that's also important because multipath signals bouncing in are cross-polarized. And so uh, even if you're not going to races where people will have left-hand and right-hand antennas, if you want a, the advantage of circular polarization, which is to reject multipath, again, the better the axial ratio of the antenna, the better it's gonna be at rejecting those signals. And these antennas have between 10 and 24 dB of, of cross-polarization rejection which is pretty good. So that's why I like the Luminear Axi Micro, especially for small quads. But if it's that good, should we all just put it on our big quads too? I don't know, maybe so. <laughs> that's gonna do it for this video. Link to this product down in, the uh, down in the video description if you wanna check it out. It's the same price as the big one, it's about 20 bucks. So it's not the cheapest antenna, the Axis never have been, but it's pretty good performance and a great form factor. It's probably the best antenna that you can put on one of these little micro guys. Thanks for watching, happy flying.